Hello chic friend, this is Fiona Ferris from howtobechic.com and this week is a really fun post. I so enjoyed writing it and it's all about seven ways to be a frugal fashionista. I've been spending a lot of time going through and updating my wardrobe for the new season lately and I wanted to share how I've been going about it. I am a thrifty girl at heart and I'd always rather spend less than more when I add new items to my wardrobe. This is not a new thing for me. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, I remember one of my favourite books was a Vogue publication, and it was a hardback glossy with very inspiring pictures, called More Dash Than Cash by Kate Hogg, and it was updated later to be called Even More Dash Than Cash by the same author. I checked online with my library and they have the 1982 version available, and I was only about 11 or 12 at that time. Um, but from looking at the covers online, it seems that my version came out in 1990. So I ordered the library version to have a read and a trip down memory lane. Such fun. What I learned from this book and other sources such as magazine articles that I wished I'd cut out at the time is that it's not just about buying new things. It's how you style your clothes, how you accessorize, how you do your hair and makeup and how you tweak your appearance to be fashionable while still honoring your classic and minimalist preferences. Hmm, that sounds a lot, a lot like French chic style, doesn't it? So here is my list of how to be inspired by fashion and create your own stylish look that you'll be happy with without spending a lot of money. I call it Fiona's 7 Ways to Be a Frugal Fashionista. Number one is to go through your closet before you even step foot in a shop. Familiarise yourself with what you have, especially if it's at the change of a season or even if it's not. Get everything out and expose your clothes to the light of day. When I did that, I found I had 75, yes I counted them, clothes hangers with items that I loved on them. That told me I definitely didn't need to go shopping just yet, as I was in no danger of running out of clothes. And I consider that I have not that many clothes, that's quite a lot, 75 hangers. Even if some of them were special occasion and outerwear and that kind of thing, and like my bathrobe, there was, there was certainly plenty of everyday clothes there. Number two is to create a capsule wardrobe for right now of what fits your current body shape well. Take out every item that is your size, if you fluctuate like I can do, and put them on the bed. See if there are new combos you can make from those clothes. Note the colour palette that will naturally occur because you have chosen all these items in the past. It is there that you will see where there are strategic pieces missing. For me, I had plenty of tops, but I needed some new bottoms to go with them and flesh out my capsule wardrobe. Last winter I remember that I had no warm tops but plenty of jeans and trousers. By doing this um, exercise you will know what you need to shop for. If anything you might find you have everything to have quite a good minimalist winter wardrobe. Number three is to update what you have. I started noticing a lot of cropped, unhemmed, as in sort of shaggy frayed edges, when I was out doing the groceries and running errands a while back, and so I started researching the new Levi's 505C cropped jeans with ripped legs and all, because I noticed those looked quite cool. I really didn't need any more jeans, because I have quite a few pairs, and they are nice diesel ones, but they all had long legs, none of them were cropped. My solution was to take a deep breath and cut the bottoms off the most ripped and distressed looking pair. Et voila! New jeans that have updated my look and I love wearing them. No expenditure necessary. The next item, number four, is to wear your better clothes. After I went through my closet and took everything out, making a capsule wardrobe of everything that fit me well, as well as being appropriate for the current season, I saw that there were quite a few items, mainly tops and blouses, that I did not wear regularly because they were a little bit dressier. I still don't wear them around the house, but if we go out for coffee or to the movies, why not wear a beautiful blush peach suede silk blouse or something dressier than my everyday gear? When else am I going to wear it? I have enjoyed dressing up slightly more, I'm wearing what I have, and it feels like I've bought something new when I haven't. Wins all around. Number five, declutter one category at a time. This is how you find those gems in your closet, the items that you bought and did not realise how much you love them and how much wear you get from them. 
It can be overwhelming to think of everything in your closet, so start with something simple, say scarves or shoes or maybe costume jewellery. With my scarves, I stopped wearing them um, in summer because even lightweight scarves because I just wasn't in the mood but I've started wearing them again now that it's autumn here in New Zealand almost winter. Since I've begun laying out my clothes on my bed before I get dressed it's fun to create a whole look by adding a scarf. I have all my scarves in a fabric storage box with a lid on in the closet so I tipped the whole lot out of my bed and chose my absolute favourites du jour and what I thought I would would um and what I thought would complement my current winter wardrobe. I decluttered a few that I knew I'd never wear again, and stored some others that I liked still, but just not now, just not with my current capsule wardrobe. Number six, revisit your favourite fashion inspiration. Ordering that book from my younger, uh, younger days, as mentioned above, the Vogue book, is one thing I'm doing for this. I find that when you revisit inspiration from the past, it sparks something fresh and new inside and makes you excited again about that uh, topic, whether it's being healthy or updating your wardrobe. I love to channel the 90s when I'm looking for inspiration, not because I want to wear matte makeup and block-heeled shoes, both of which I loved at the time as I watched Melrose Place, but because the essence of the 90s to me talks about simplicity, minimalism, Calvin Klein perfume advertisements always make me happy, like they're really sort of quite minimal back then. Um, And also Carolyn Bissett's Kendi's sunning style and all those sorts of enticing and inspiring thoughts. For you, it may be your love affair with Laura Ashley and the prairie dress style. It's not that you want to go back to wearing that look, but it helps you dream and see maybe you could be a bit more feminine in in your current personal style. Maybe that's the thing you're missing. And lastly, number seven, is to try looking in discount stores first. When I did identify that I need to wear more, um, to buy more to wear in my lower half, I decided to start my shopping at the lowest price stores. Spending a lot is not necessarily a guarantee of something better quality or more flattering to your body shape. I've seen plenty of dreadfully cut clothing items on bargain racks that I wouldn't even pay $10 for, let alone 300 I like to think I have a healthy distrust of clothes that cost too much. Others may disagree. Yes, some items you can see the quality, you can see how nice the fabric is, but some don't look like the price on the tag at all. I like to start my shopping trips at the least expensive places first, just to see what's around. If I find what I'm looking for at a great price, I stop there. I do have some nicer, more expensive pieces in my wardrobe, not Chanel, far from that, but more than discount store prices. I think I match high-low, you know, just how that Vogue book told me to. So those are my top seven ways to be a frugal fashionista. I hope you gained even one nugget from them, because that's all you need, you know. I'd love you to share your favourite way on how to update your wardrobe at a minimal or low cost. I know there'll be loads more tips out there and I'm really keen to hear yours. I will see you next week and before I go, I just want to share that Tara at the lovely blog doneandleftundone.com interviewed me recently. I answered five questions, or I think it was six, and it was such a fun exercise. So do hop along and uh, read my interview on Tara's blog doneandleftundone.com. I hope you enjoy it. See you next week.